What's up guys, so given the recent release of the new free DPS character Dr. Ratio, I figured I would give my opinion on the best DPS units along with going over how good I think Dr. Ratio is. That implies Dr. Ratio is amongst the best DPS units in the game, so a little bit of a spoiler. Before we get into that, please subscribe to the channel for more Honkai content, would really appreciate it, and drop a like if you enjoyed this video. Alright, I'm going to narrow this down to the top 5 DPS characters in the game. Now just a disclaimer, this is my opinion on who the best DPS characters are, if you agree with me or disagree, I would love to in the comments okay starting with number five now just a side note number five and number four are kind of interchangeable and you'll understand why but kicking it off is topaz now topaz is a character i really do regret skipping out on since she just has such a fun playstyle. the main reason why i consider topaz being amongst the best dps is because she is able to deal really good damage by herself and is then able to allow follow-up attack characters on her team to deal much more damage also now I believe the more value you can bring to the team, the better the character you are. Just like someone like Fushuan, she is able to solo sustain along with providing a harmony aspect in her kit being the increased crit rate for the team. So Topaz is an enabler, and how she does that is through the debuff she applies on enemies. With her skill, she applies the proof of death status which increases the damage taken from follow up attacks by 50%. Now this debuff only takes effect on the most recent target it is applied to, but if there is no enemy with the debuff applied, it will just be applied randomly so you will be able to deal that extra follow up attack damage. Now, how Topaz's follow-up attack works. Every time you use her skill, Numbi attacks straight away afterwards. Topaz's talent allows for Numbi to have his own turn, similarly to Jingyu 1's Lightning Lord, so he may attack twice in quick succession, which is going to be considered as a follow-up attack. When enemies afflicted with the proof of death status receive an attack from a follow-up attack on the team, it will advance forward Numbi's attack by 50%. So Numbi will be dealing quite a lot of damage through the battle since he gets a lot of turns in from Topaz's skill and talent. That's how Topaz essentially works. But the best thing, as I have said, is the fact that she can pretty much buff any follow-up attack character in the game. So characters like Jingyuan, Himiko, and um, Dr. Ratio can deal quite a lot more damage. Now, that alone increases the value of the character by a ton, as this enables for dual DPS teams to be more viable as well. If you are running two DPS characters on a team, you kind of do want synergy between them. You can't really have two selfish DPS characters doing their own thing. So the fact that Topaz is able to help the other DPS being maybe someone like Dr. Ratio just increases efficiency in the team. Now fourth place, some bias is involved here, I'll be honest, is Kafka. Now as I said, both 4 and 5 are interchangeable and that is due to the fact that they are both enablers in their own fields. Topaz enables for follow-up attacks to deal more damage, whereas Kafka is a dot detonator and is kind of essential for the dot team compositions. Kafka is a great damage healer straight up and she deals good lightning damage with her skill on 3 enemies as it's a blast skill. That means she deals 160% of her attack as lightning damage on the enemy selected and 60% on the adjacent enemies. If the target is receiving dot, all dots currently placed on enemy immediately produce damage equal to 75% of the original damage. Kafka also has a nice quirk being once a turn when an ally uses a normal attack on an enemy, Kafka deals a follow up attack on the same enemy which is pretty nice and it does a decent amount of damage. Kafka's ult is a full AoE attack that deals 80% of Kafka's attack as lightning damage and will shock enemies for 2 turns. Along with that, when the ultimate is used, enemy target will receive damage immediately from all applied dot sources. So this would be considered the aspect that boosts Kafka's value as a character. Kafka is the queen of dot. Any dot characters that come out in the future would love to be paired with Kafka. And there is a character that goes by the name of Black Swan that visually looks amazing and is a dot dealing character. So I cannot wait to see this pair up soon. Additionally, Kafka is extremely easy to build in comparison to your other DPS characters. Speed, attack and some effect hit rate. So all of the pieces you can't get crit rate and crit damage on, they will most likely have the stats Kafka once, so you can just slap those relics onto her. Moving on to the mega damage dealers now. Kicking it off with Imbiber to Lune, this guy is simply a crazy damage dealer. Imbiber to Lune has a very unique mechanic within his kit, which is somewhat of a double-edged sword. His skill essentially allows you to enhance his normal attack up to 3 tiers. Each time you enhance his normal attack, you will use an additional skill point. So if you enhance his basic attack 3 times, that is 3 skill points used on that attack, which will deal an enormous amount of damage. The basic attack enhanced once will still be considered as a single target attack. Once you upgrade the attack by twice or thrice, the attack becomes a blast skill, which will deal damage to the adjacent enemies along with the targeted enemy. Additionally, every time you use the basic attack enhanced twice or thrice, you gain a crit damage stack by 12% stacking up to 4 times, meaning you can stack up to 48% crit damage, which is pretty insane. 
And now the Talon. After each hit during an attack, you gain one stack of Righteous Heart, which increases damage by 10% and this stacks up to six times lasting until the end of his turn. So as you can see, in Bible to Lune, can increase his damage and multiplies by a ton. This character has a lot going for him, from design to animations to DPS. The only thing that puts me off is the huge skill point attack. However, the ultimate technique does kind of save him in this regard. After using the ultimate, which deals 300% of his attack to a single enemy and 140% to adjacent targets, he gains two Squama Sacra Sancta stacks, which can be considered as his own skill points. After using his technique, you will also gain another stack. The max of these stacks you would be able to hold is three. So when you have these stacks, you can enhance the basic attack thrice and it won't consume any skill points, which is pretty handy. However, the ultimate is a 140 energy cost, so you won't be able to pop it off as often to have those stacks. But overall, the character is a monster, which is definitely worth pulling. Now, second place, a lot of players may be quite pleased as everyone actually has him, which is Dr. Ratio. Now, the reason why I believe Dr. Ratio is such a good DPS is due to how convenient he is, as well as actually having the highest single target damage dealing in the game. Now, what I mean by convenient, Dr. Ratio is a really good damage dealer, along with having a lot of freedom with this character. That being the team compositions you play him in, along with his relics. Most of Dr. Ratio's damage comes from his follow-up attack, so just having a two-piece Grand Duke relic set, which increases the follow-up attack damage by 20%, is enough. The other two pieces are completely up to you, to be honest. You can give him the Speed Relic two-piece, the two-piece Imaginary set, or just finish off the Grand Duke set if you like. Dr. Ratio is very self-sufficient in being able to stack a lot of crit rate and crit damage on himself, so that would take away from the common stress of having to have perfect relic subsets for a character. As I said, Dr. Ratio's damage mainly comes from the follow-up attacks. When using a skill, there's a 40% chance of launching a follow-up attack against the target, dealing 270% of his attack as imaginary damage. Now, for each debuff that is on the enemy you attack, the chance to launch follow-up attacks increases by 20%. There are many debuffs in the game, so you have a wide variety to choose from to pair with Dr. Ratio. Looking at Dr. Ratio's traces, there is actually a debuff that Dr. Ratio applies himself, which is when a skill is used to attack an enemy, you have a 100% chance of reducing the effect resistance by 10% for two turns. So applying this debuff on the boss, which would be the best way to go about it, would increase the chances of landing his follow-up attack to 60%. There is one standout character that comes to mind being Topaz, which I think is the best partner for Dr. Ratio. She applies the Proof of Death debuff, which increases the chances for Dr. Ratio to land his follow-up attack to 60%, and if it does hit, the damage of his follow-up attack is increased by 50%. Paired with Dr. Ratio's Trace, there would be an 80% chance to land a follow-up attack. So there is a lot of synergy between the two, which does increase Topaz's value as a character. Also, when Dr. Ratio uses a skill, for every debuff on the target, his crit rate increases by 2.5% and crit damage by 5%, which can stack up to 6 times. So you can ramp up up to 15% additional crit rate and 30% crit damage, which is what I was talking about earlier, which Dr. Ratio can boost himself in those two stats, making it less of a hindrance on your relics. Additionally, when dealing damage to a target that has 3 or more debuffs for each debuff on the target Dr. Ratio deals 10% more damage, stacking up to 50%. So similarly to in Bible to Lune, Dr. Ratio can increase the damage multipliers by a lot, and the conditions to do so are not hard. You just need a good debuffer and you're good to go. So overall, the fact that we've been given this character that deals a huge amount of DPS, and the main aspect of his damage coming from follow-up attacks, which I find pretty fun, for free is mind-blowing. One aspect that sets aside Dr. Ratio from in Bible to Lune is his ultimate. When Dr. Ratio uses his ultimate, which deals a good amount of damage, being 240% of his attack, he inflicts wise man's folly onto the enemy so when an ally hits the enemy inflicted with wise man's folly dr ratio actually launches a follow-up attack which can be triggered twice so when you do land his ultimate on the boss you will deal a ton of follow-up attack damage coming from his skill and two follow-up attacks being triggered from allies so yeah i believe he is the superior imaginary damage dealer but in babti lune is very close now most of you would have guessed the number one spot being Jing Liu. This character to this day is a joke. Jing Liu has a decent damage dealing single target skill. Now after you use her skill twice, she gains two stacks of Syzygy. Once she has two stacks, she enters her transcended state which enables her to take action straight away. In this state, you can gain up to 50% crit rate and her skill becomes a blast attack that deals 250% of her attack to the enemy and 125 to the adjacent enemies. Once you use a skill in this state, you don't consume skill points. Instead, you consume a stack of Syzygy. Another interesting part of this skill is that you actually discard 4% of your ally's max HP, which increases Jing Liu's attack by 540% of the total HP consumed. Now, her ultimate is also a blast attack dealing 300% to the main enemy and 150 to the adjacent enemies. However, you also gain a stack of synergy when you do pop the ult. So if you can really plan out the turns to boost Jing Liu's energy from someone like Ting Yun or Huo Huo, 
you can keep Jingliu in her trance in the state for a while, enabling some crazy numbers to be dealt. Jingliu's overall technique allows you to freeze enemies and also provides a stack of synergy. So once you enter battle, all you need to do is use a skill once and you'll be in a trance in state popping off those high numbers. At this point in the game, I don't think Jingliu's position is even questionable. She is skill point efficient. You don't need to build much crit rate into the character as she provides herself with a 50% crit rate boost. So that just leaves you with having to focus on one less substat, which is a massive plus. And overall just deals a crap ton of damage. With the right team, Jing Liu is far above the rest of the DPS characters in the game, and the best in slot would be Bronya or Ruan Mei. I haven't really tested out much with Jing Liu and Ruan Mei, but I've played a ton with Jing Liu and Bronya, and the synergy between the two is perfect. Jing Liu clearly sits on top purely from how much DPS she can put out. So yeah, that's my top 5 DPS characters in Honkai Sorrel and my review of Dr. Ratio being the latest addition to the game. So for the players that don't have these characters, see this list as the priority you would want to follow in summary. Of course this is my opinion, so if you think otherwise then that is fair. If you prefer the design of Imab Tulune over Jing Liu then feel free to pull for him instead. These characters are all great at the end of the day. Well, that wraps it up. If you guys did enjoy the video, please subscribe to the channel for more Honkai content from myself and drop a like. Also, drop a comment on whether you agree with me or not. If not, then I'd love to see your list in the comments. And yeah, hope to catch you guys later.